before the break, we asked what is the maximum sentence for GBH with intent at present? And the answer is life. Thank you kindly. You're watching Thursday's Right Stuff with Fina Arushi, Stephen Gates and alien investigator Elizabeth Slade. We'll have the rest of today's <laughs> headlines for you shortly. Uh, but right now, what do you think of the new sentencing rules that will effectively pass a get-out-of-jail-free card to the most violent of offenders so long as they say sorry? Right Stuff at 5.tv is the place for your thoughts. And naturally, the Daily Mail is outraged. These new rules that judges and magistrates must follow to the letter if formally adopted next year will be far-reaching, that is for sure. But the headline-grabbing element is positively alarming because at present, those convicted of GBH, which is about as far as you can go before you kill someone, it's an attack that leaves bones broken or victims needing a lengthy stay in hospital, well, at present, you'd automatically go to jail if you were convicted. But the new rules change that. Instead, those thugs who say they're sorry and, I forgot, and really, really mean it, will be spared prison. Courts must also consider the Yobbo's age, as youth is going to count in the offender's favour when it comes to sentencing as well. And that was me thinking that lagered up youths were the principal threat to peaceful Britain on a Friday and Saturday night. Oh, well, there is some good news. Uh, these rules could cut prison and probation costs by £19 million a year, fewer people being locked up. But Lord Justice Leveson, chairman of the Sentencing Council that issued these rules, says cost-cutting has nothing to do with this extraordinary legal U-turn. <laughs> Do you believe in FINA? Not at all. No. Not at all. It takes, uh, apparently it costs something like 38000 to pe yeah, keep a man in jail. Yeah, it's cheaper to send a child to eat. <laughs> right. So, obviously, it's a financial thing and it's a really, really poor thing that we won't have a deterrent to stop people from being violent. Mm. You know, I'm sorry. Oh, OK, then. Off you go. It doesn't work for me do at you, all. Do you take the view that if you break someone's nose, arm, leg, skull, or cut them up so they need being stitched up, that that deserves a prison sentence automatically? Uh, yeah. yeah. I would say so. Yeah. I think you cut it, you have to go stand behind those bars. What if it was a first offence? What, when it he punched know... him with one punch, he didn't mean to break <laughs> his right, nose. Yeah. Oh, I'm just oh, so sorry. That makes me feel so much better, but you still have to go behind bars, kid. That's just yeah. wrong. And this I mean, also, yeah. th this, come, this comes after we, we've heard that they're going to be cutting the budget for the police forces. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of this type of, of uh, crime seems to have dropped recently because there's been an increase of... of, of Police, for, police yeah. officers on the street. Absolutely. I mean, it's yeah. difficult to make the, a real causal connection, but it does seem crazy. I mean, again, I thought we'd done the thin end of the comprehensive spending review wedge with the uh, sickness benefit payments, but this is, this is really difficult, isn't it? That, that said, that there, is, there is a sort of a twist to this, I think, which we, we, we must bear in mind, which is prison serves various different purposes. It, it's a punishment for somebody. Uh, you're, you're trying to correct somebody's behaviour and you're protecting society. Now, obviously... Taking violent Punishment people and off rehabilitation, the, yeah, the two and, and taking people off the streets who have been violent is protecting society for the amount of time that the person's in prison. When they come out, I mean, reoffending rates are very, very high. Punishment in the sense of correction or rehabilitation really doesn't seem to work. Now, if you look at, I, I'm not a criminal psychologist, but but this isn't stopping people from lamping somebody in, in the street after the pub. You know, I, I would. I would suspect that, that a thug comes out of the pub, lug it up, and doesn't think, am I going to get a prison sentence for this before no. stabbing somebody? I don't think they think at all. No. Well, no, exactly. But, but, but prison doesn't seem to be solving it. So there, there is something in the sense that, that it's not... Prison isn't solving all of the problems that it, it is there you, to... Well, you uh, see, we, we, we had Huey Morgan, uh, the fun-loving criminal, on the panel not so long ago, and he has been in prison for various misdemeanours when he was young. And one of the things he said that was really, really interesting is he said, as far as he was concerned, the first two weeks in prison... But if you're looking at uh, sentences of, of, say, under two years, the first two weeks are the nightmare time, the real punishment, and thereafter you get into the swing of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ken Clark is pretty much under pressure. He's saying that short sentences don't work. Perhaps he might be saying that again to save the prison's bill. Huey Morgan says they do if they're very short. Surely two weeks in prison is the very least that some, someone should get if they break your nose. Well, you said, well, if it's a first offence, does that make a difference? Well, but how do we know if it's a first offence? They just haven't been caught before. Exactly. Or they've had endless you start lower down the scale. Very good you don't let them get that far up. It's just the offence itself. No, I mean, if you, so you're scared then, if, it, if, it, if, the, if there is no um, deterrent, what do we do? Do we stay in our houses? People are now scared to go out. 
right. because someone punches a window and they do yep. it again, they do it again. You do something to them and you're the one that's taken to jail. Mm -hmm. There'll be a jail for you. Well, why not the criminal? Yeah. That's right. Well, <laughs> it, it is very, very <laughs> scary. It's very true. Um, and does, the, does it bother you that, that most of us here perhaps all of us here, suspect that, contrary to what uh, Lord Justice Leveson is saying, mm -hmm. cost-cutting is the reason behind this, that it's not actually what they might well, really if it's, want to Well, if it's not cost-cutting, they haven't come up with a sensible... Exactly, a, that's a exactly the point. If, if it's not that, no what's the other solution? Yeah. yeah. Spot on. What, what about the, using some of that budget towards proper rehabilitation? Because it's quite clear that a lot of these people re-offend, re-offend, yeah. go in and out, uh, uh, I call it jailhouse. But what if it's a first offender? What if it is a first offender? I still think first offenders... I think the money can be better. If you break, someone, if you break you someone's nose or you cut them open, you should end up in prison. I agree with you, but I also, like uh, Elizabeth said, it probably isn't the first offender. It's just the first time being caught. And I think we should spend some of that budget into getting to the bottom of these things and, yeah. and, and helping people rather than just throwing them but away re Rehabilitation is, is one half of the equation. Yeah. The punishment aspect is another and I'm we sure a, a lot of people at home are going to feel that uh, that violent jobs should be jailed. Uh, maybe you don't. Uh, if they say sorry, perhaps you feel they should be forgiven. Uh, let us know your thoughts. Write stuff at 5.tv is the place. Now then, just before we hear your thoughts on national pride, where we're lacking, let's have some emails on this country's new get soft approach to those convicted of GBH. So long, of course, as they're really, really sorry. <laughs> of course. Uh, the really first... sorry. You've got to <laughs> really, mean it. really sorry. The first one I have is from Alan, and he says all violence should be met with a custodial sentence, and no bail should be granted, and theft should be met with reparation sentencing. So violence in jail and theft not. Okay. Um, Shalini says sometimes it's easy to pick up more bad habits behind bars. So it, if it is a minor offence, maybe a sorry or community but work is all on. that's is needed. Is breaking someone's nose a minor offence? No. You know, I don't think that's a minor offence. I think people that have that done to them, you know, it scars you forever, not physically, but up here as well. It's a hideous thing. Hideous the final thing. email I have here um, is from Adam, and he says. Just put them in the army, send them off to Afghanistan, they don't won't the army offend again. Them. I don't think the army wants them, that's the problem. Ill-disciplined. Yeah. Now, thanks for that, Kirsty.